Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me for one of the last Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination videos. We've actually only got five more videos left, Walnut Stain being the fifth from last one. So we're going to be looking at this colour and we're going to be comparing it to other browns within the Distress range, seeing whereabouts it sits, what it works with. We're also going to be doing two colour combinations as well. Now the previous video that was released was actually Vintage Photo, which was another brown. So I've tried to make sure this one is quite different with the second colour combination. So you're going into completely different colours there. So let's start by swatching this. Now everything that I'm using um, to do the blends and the swatches, so my ink pads, my brushes, my blending mat and my colour charts are all available linked in the description below. So you'll find them all there. Now I'm going to start with Walnut Stain in the middle of this swatch and just onto smooth white cardstock. And the reason I use smooth is because I find you get a better blend, much easier to move the ink around. So something like a stamping cardstock is quite good usually. Um, there's a number of different cardstocks that say they're suitable for ink blending. Um, I often find it's kind of your preference, what weight you like to use, but the heavier weight, the more likely you're not going to get any sort of bending or warping from the wet ink being on it. So you can see there, Walnut Stain, it is darker than things like Vintage Photo, but it does still have some warm tones in there. I think it has a touch of grey as well. Let's have a look at it against the label, because I always think the label is not quite as warm as it is when it's blended. So you can see there, you've almost got those yellow tones, but they show more through the lighter parts, so where it's not bl blended quite as deeply and darkly. Dark, I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> so down in the bottom left hand corner of the label and the top right you've got the solid colour which is where you compare it. If you're mixing this with water these are the sorts of shades and tones that you're likely to get. Again I think you'd have a slightly warmer shade to those though. So let's now take a look at uh, this colour, so this walnut stain against other browns that are in the range. Now I'm using my colour chart. This is free for you to download um, from my website, I don't ask for an email sign up or anything like that. You can simply click to download it, save it, print it off. Um, it doesn't come already filled in. You need to fill it in at home with the colours you have, which gives you a nice overview as to what you've got and what you are missing as well. Um, there is also a template included with the colour chart and that will allow you to create these uh, little rectangles when you're blending your colours onto your chart. So as we can see we've got walnut stain here. Now when it dries you get that cloudiness a little bit more but don't forget also I have laminated my chart with a matte laminating pouch or matte laminating pouches. So we do get the slight frostiness to it, but I still think this is, uh, if you've blended this a little bit heavier, probably you get it as dark as this. So I think Vintage Photo is quite similar, um, really quite similar. Um, nothing else, Gathered Twigs isn't too far off though. That is also a dark brown, but I think this has more of a gray tone to it. Um, nothing else on here, obviously ground espresso is much much darker and if we come the other way we're going into the purples then I believe so yeah so really vintage photo I think is the closest one it's really not too far off at all to the point where when I first used this one I had to check that I definitely had the right ink pad um, yeah so as you can see vintage photo very very close if you have that one which is actually the last video we did um, on with the colour combinations you could replace that in these combinations if you wanted to. So let's do a tonal blend. So we're going to put walnut stain between brushed corduroy and ground espresso. So ground espresso I'll do first. Usually I do the darkest last, but we'll do this one first. This is the deep dark brown. This one does have its own video. In fact, I think everything that we're looking at today um, has its own video now. We're getting to that stage where lots of them do have. So I'm really excited to be able, be able to wrap up this series and complete it for you all and then move on to another series in 2024 which I'm very very excited about because I have some uh, an idea that I'm going to do for you and I hope you'll find it all very very useful. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so that you see that when 
it starts loading. Okay, so we have gone to a Grand Espresso there that's worked beautifully. I've got a patch of darker brown here that's still a little bit wet and that does often throw your blending off a little bit. You can sort of think, oh, I haven't blended that very well. Leave it to dry is my advice. Just leave it to dry and see what it looks like when it's dry because very often those colours do even out once they are all dried off. Then I'm going into brushed corduroy, which is much warmer, a gorgeous sort of yellow tone, yellow tan colour. I really like this one, borderline mustard. And this one is going to work, of course, beautifully into the browns. So I'm going to go up to the walnut stain and then I'm going to put a little more walnut stain on my brush. And just go back over the solid area there and then up into the brushed corduroy just tiny little circles working my way up and sometimes you can see the blendings going beautifully so you can just carry on with this until it fades out to the brushed corduroy color so the first color that's there beautiful don't need to do any more to that you can overwork your colors so if you're happy there I think I just need to probably blend do a bit more work between the two there but you can see this is going to be wet so this is where I'm going to leave it and come back to this if I need to do a bit more blending around here I will do that when everything's dry I'll go over it again because I don't want to keep adding more ink and then think oh it's not blending it's not blending and you're just in a vicious circle then so uh, I'm going to leave that for now hopefully that will all dry off to this sort of color and will look fabulous but there's three colors you can mix the three of them together to create a lovely blend now for my second combination I'm going to be going into greens so to help go from the brown into the greens I'm going to use forest moss which is a really dark green which has a hint of brown in it I feel so a dark sort of mossy green so let's start with walnut stain on the end here such a lovely I love when oxides are juicy and they just apply beautifully okay so a little bit of the walnut stain on the end there walnut stain is perfect as well for going around the edge of your projects much like vintage photo and giving that vintage aged look it's a nice sort of mid brown for that then I'm going to go into forest moss this has a hint of yellow in it as well so it's definitely if you were going to say warm green uh, warm green or, or cool green this is definitely a warm green it's kind of almost an olive color and I think that does help with the blending into the brown there let's bring that brown make sure we don't lose that so bring some of that back down into the greens okay fade this out using very light pressure that's going to help with the next lot of blending and wipe my mat because I don't want the darker colors mixing into the lighter colors as we work through. So, peeled paint is next. This is going to look absolutely beautiful if you were doing an autumnal card, doing something with lots of foliage, for example. There we go. Now I'm going to come back to forest moss and just, I think I might need a little bit more there. Just see how we're doing, yeah, there. A little bit more of that up to the peeled paint. Just blending beautifully together. This is the beauty of working with similar colours throughout your blends. They just effortlessly blend together. And lastly, we're going to go into crushed olive, which is just a brighter shade of sort of peeled paint. A bit more yellow to it. And again, just working beautifully by itself, not needing a lot of work doing to it. There we go. Easy, lovely. I've got, you can see the patch in the shininess where it's still damp, so that needs to dry but aren't those colors just yummy if you're doing a forest scene for example that would be wonderful in the background now let's give this a wipe and let's take a look at that first brown combination we did that needed to just finish drying although it still may be a little bit wet it's only had a few moments 
not too bad now, is it? See how it dries. It's so much smoother, more beautiful. So we've got ground espresso down the bottom. And then we've got the walnut stain in the middle, which is, again, quite dark. It's actually dried even darker, it seems. But it leads really nicely into the brushed corduroy. You can only just see the difference between these two. Just a touch darker down the bottom here. Um, maybe if I layered up um, the ground espresso a bit more on there, we might see more darkness. Otherwise, I'd probably be tempted to go over that with a little bit of black soot to really bring out the darkness in that. And then we've got the beautiful greens here. Um, so we've gone from the walnut stain into forest moss, into peeled paint, and then into crushed olive. So thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out the rest of the playlist and all the other videos just here. And I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel just here as well. Thank you ever so much. I'll see you again very soon.